This is amazing to come out here and see all these young, fresh people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to sp say a special thank you to the people who actually made this happen. Uh, Nick and his wife, Felicia. I don't think they need any introduction. I can't thank you enough for the kids from all of it. And I've been asked, why is this so important to me? And I would ask every one of you, if you have never met one of our kids, come meet them, and it will become important to you, too. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being here today. Uh, I'm going to say Huda, okay, to start this off. And I know many of you, I start a text off, and it's Huda, and you're like, what is that? Okay, Huda is great vibes, it's great love, it, it's just joy, it's beauty, it's a celebration. It could, it's the greatest of hellos, it's like hi with... 10 eyes, you know, so this this here right now, you know, it, it is a hooter for this event here, great energy. Uh, I'm blessed to have Christian Singleton here who was running the Olivet with his close to 100 kids at camp today. One of the ways I was introduced to Christian is I'm walking out of work and uh, he comes out and there's uh, icing on his ears, okay? I'm like, what's going on here? And uh, so every Friday he picks a camper of the week, okay, and they get to pie him, okay? <laughs> so, so that's Friday, but let's not forget Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because every single day he's walking out, he's been bombarded with water balloons uh, or challenged to eat edible crickets, okay? And the, these are the people who are on the front line and keeping the club going because of their heart, their passion, and thank you for everything. So. so just tell us, how, how was it, you know, coming up in the Olivets during your time? Um, growing up in the Olivets, you know, it was a great time for me. You know, just the atmosphere, the vibe, you know, the experience, just being a kid, having fun, whether it's being in the game room, playing tournaments, being in the gym, playing dodgeball, just being a kid, but for me it was having those positive role models in my life as the staff members, telling me right from wrong, you know, telling me that you can be anything you want in life if you just put your mind to it. And when the opportunity presented itself, I want to do that opportunity and give back to the kids now as the director that and give them that same opportunity, that same chance, that same message that I was given. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Thank you, thank you. Um, just another question: Did you did you win in any tournaments? <laughs> Pool, ping pong, basketball? Did you win them? As a kid, I'm, I was unstoppable. No one can beat me. Uh, <laughs> but as a director now, the, the kids will tell you up and down they're better than me. They're really not. But uh, I, I let them have that win just so they know they can be, they beat Mr. Christian. But uh, the, don't walk in the gym and there's a game of dodgeball because I'm I'm going all out. So they're not they're not if, if they get me they're, they're like on top of the world. So I just instantly become the target. But um, at the end of the day, like I said, it just it's all about the kids. At the end of the day, it's all about having fun. You know, and that's that's the main point to just prepare a safe, fun at atmosphere and vibe for these kids to come in every day and. Um, and just be themselves. Amazing, Christian. Thank you. So, you're now a director. You went from a club kid. Now you're a director. Okay. Uh, how? What is that experience like? Hey, tell us, please. It's what I call the Olivet full circle. So, like you said, I started out as a club kid, eight, nine. You know, coming with my my little brother, my cousin, and. Then from there, just went on up. You know, I did the AmeriCorps program, um, bought, did some volunteer work, um, got employed by the Olivets, assistant director, now director. So, and the main constant of why, because I've been working with the Olivets for now for the past seven years, and the constant is the kids, and it's just all about the kids and being that role model in their life. That the reality of these guys is unfortunately not all kids have that. They, they're looking for that big brother that father figure and that's what I want to be you know in their life and just my goal every day my personal goal every day is to impact one life if I impact one life it was a, it was a successful day for me 
and that's why God willing, yeah. And just, like I said, the past seven years, that's my goal, day in, day out, just impact one life, and God willing, I'll keep doing that and continue to be that, that positive model, you know, for them. Well, Christian, thank you. And I would tell you, you know, I do my best to be outside of dismissal and when the kids are getting there, you know, arriving to the Olivet. And I'm telling you, they, they sprint up the hill to come to the club. When they leave, they leave doing airplanes out of the door. You go, vroom, okay. And Christian, you're impacting more than one life every day. So, and these, these kids will, uh, you know, remember you forever. So we, we see the humility that Christian has. Okay, but I gotta ask him a question here. For those who don't know, he is Nick Singleton's brother, okay? Um, Christian, have you ever tackled your brother? <laughs> when, I was a, when I was younger, yeah. Uh, I think if I tried to do that now, it wouldn't, it wouldn't end well. <laughs> just putting it mildly, just, yeah, it just wouldn't end well. But uh, no, yeah, when I was younger, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, it's not happening now. Awesome. Please give Christian a round of applause. Thank you, great man. You know, when I uh, took over Reading High Boys Basketball, please know, uh, you know, I'm not a job chaser. I'm not looking to climb up the ladder. You know, my, my theory was always to be just, you know, uh, uh, as a wrestling coach told me where they say, uh, tuck your elbows, keep your head tucked, right? You know, and uh, I just wanted to work hard every single day. And whatever happened happened you know god will put me in the place that i need to be you know and so i never thought i was going to be reading high boys basketball coach uh one coach told me he said rick you're going to be you know the, the next coach at reading high and i said get out of here it's never going to happen you know and here at the and it happened <laughs> it happened uh, and the same thing happened here at the olivet boys and girls club so thank you sue and angel uh for hunting me down but for anybody who knows Sue and Angel, if you get hunted down by them, you don't have much of an option. <laughs> so the standard is high, the love is high, uh, the, the authenticity. You know, uh, thank you to Opportunity House and their team, Dorian Modesto, are here for carrying us through those months. You know, so thank you. Can we please put our hands together for Opportunity House? And so when I put love at the forefront, things changed. So what is my vision for the Olivet Boys and Girls Club? It's to be number one in the nation. Okay, it's to be number one. It's to be the best boys and girls club in the nation. Okay, hands down. And, you know, how do we get there? We get there through philanthropy. Okay, we get there through our programming. We get there through, most importantly, our kids. Through our kids. So, if I'm able... As I'm just learning. I'm getting coaching and training, okay, on what a balance sheet looks like, okay, and the cash flow and all those other things. But if we can do everything through love and we can through it, you know, through 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 passion, through joy, then guess what? We're winning. And that is the vision there. And I and I'll tell you somebody who taught me a lot. All right, everybody know who this guy is? Yeah. Now, he said he's underdressed. Now, I told him to bring his heart. He's good. Okay? <laughs> Everybody knows everything that he has put out with that. Um, so thank you, Lonnie, for coming out here. But kids teach us more. The kids do more for us than we do for them. Okay? And sometimes we don't see that. We don't understand that. So there's about 50 pictures of Lonnie, and some of y'all may have it in your phone, okay, where he's holding the basketball and he's going like this. Okay? Let me tell you what he's doing. He's telling me to shut up, calm down, he got it. <laughs> so when I learned to be patient, put love at the forefront and have fun, that is when we started winning. I mean, I'm, I'm an Olivet's Boys and Girls Club member since I could possibly remember. My mother worked there. Um, I'm a Clinton kid, ride or die. That's where I was from. I'm from the north side of Redding, Pennsylvania. Schuylkill Avenue is where I'm from. And um, truthfully, if it wasn't for the Obvious Boys and Girls Club, if it wasn't for Clinton, um, I don't know where I would be. You know, I got two older brothers, um, you know, who kind of didn't have the same path or the same road that I had. You know, um, obviously living inside Reading is not the easiest place to be. Obviously you're gonna have trials and tribulations. You know, for me, I mean, me and my mother, we were dang, dang near homeless, you know, going from house to house. You know what I'm saying? We used to have days where 
I would have to fill up my cold water bowl, put it in the microwave so I can fill up a, a tub so I can have a hot bath. That's just the life that I live. But if there's something that kept me motivated, something that kept me going, something that made me uh, believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel, it was Clinton. We had so many kids that were above me, that were high school students, that were middle school students, whatever it might have been, or grown men that were my mentors that talked to me. Times that I was hurting, times that I was sad, times that I was confused or just angry at the world. These people influenced me, you know, and in my opinion, you know, it, it takes a village to build somebody. And I would say Clinton or just the Office Boys and Girls Club in general is something that really impact me in more than just one or two different ways you know it, it it impact my entire life especially not having no guidance you know my two brothers were also in and out of jail and i would say if it wasn't for clinton i don't know where i would be you know i might have had been at the same place that i'm in but it would have been a lot harder you know I would have took a lot more steps but because of all of this we used to have as soon as school would end i went to northwest elementary so as soon as Northwest Elementary School would end, it's on the same block, I would essentially just walk straight to Clinton. And once you get there, you would have to read and write for an hour. You would have to make sure you get your books right. You have to do your paragraphs. Do you have schoolwork? I know who your teacher is. You have this type of schoolwork you gotta finish today and it's due tomorrow. So they were always on top of it, always making sure that I was doing the right thing. And you know, when you're younger, obviously it wasn't the funnest thing in the world going, you know, I want to go for, I want to go downstairs and play with my friends. My friends got here 30 minutes before me. They're already playing dodgeball. But I put the work in. They made sure that every kid was being intellectually in tune, understanding what they're doing, understanding that, listen, in order to do whatever you want to do, you have to do the schoolwork first. So for me, um, you know, being a kid from Redding, it is the most important thing in my life is the Obvious Boys and Girls Club. There's nothing better in the world for an inner city kid to continue to grow and blossom and allow them to blossom. Because not every kid is in the same road, you know? You can't, you can't really, you can take the, you can take the horse to the, to the water, but you can't teach them to drink it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think the Obvious Boys and Girls Club is something that made me understand that there's not only just more to life but there's more than just running Pennsylvania there's so many opportunities your dreams and your idea or whatever you might envision is limitless you know and because I had the mentors and people that work there you know and always being able to talk to them um, that's something that allowed me to when I was when I would go home back home to the places that you know being a kid from the city you might not want to go home sometimes or you might not want to deal with certain things but because of this, because of the Office Boys and Girls Club, we had flag football where we played against all the other kids in the, in the city. We had basketball where you played all the other kids in the city. And, you know, th those are friendships that I met from basketball or flag football or just uh, performing arts center that some of, these, some of my friendships is from the Olive Sports and Girls Club, it's from these sports, it's from being able to meet new people, meet new kids, meet new players, whatever it might be and continue to grow. And I think that's something that's very important is for the kids to find, finally be kids and be able to connect between one another and understand that there's love, there's love at the end of the tunnel. This is not just how it's always gonna be. So um, from the bottom of my heart, I really do thank you guys. And I hope that you guys uh, understand where I'm coming from, uh, uh, inner city kid from Redding, Pennsylvania. Um, and Clinton is what made me as well. Redding, Pennsylvania is what made me, but Clinton is definitely a high percentage of how I blossomed into who I was. And um, if it wasn't for Clinton, like, it kind of gives me chills on my back. If it wasn't for Clinton, I really don't know where I would be. And obviously, like you said, there's over 450,000 kids in the world. So I can only imagine how many more Lonnie Walkers there are, if not better than me, in this in, in, in this Reading community. So thank you. Woo! Love you guys. Woo! I love this young man, and um, you know, he did first of all, he's in town, you leave tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, okay, he stays on the flight, he's right from training, okay, so it looks better than many of us coming out of the gym right now, but uh, you know, this is not a publicity thing, this is not, you know, he, he asked me, you know, the one day when he came back, what's, what's up with the Olivets, that's one of the first questions that he asked, and then, uh, you know, I, I told him where we were. You know, and he asked, he, when I told him that the Powell was closed and Mulberry was closed, he was 
astonished. What, what do you mean it's closed? We can't close doors at the Olivet's Boys and Girls Club. We have so many people that we need to service, you know, and so he understands the purpose. And when he tells you guys that he had chills, he did have chills. I could see the goosebumps on his arms. So we understand what that means. But, you know, he asked me yesterday, uh, when are we going to drink? We're going to drink today. All right, before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure make sure he gets a shot prior before he leaves. And uh, and uh, he has one more thing to say. And I just want to say, Coach Rick Perez, I'm sorry, I still call him Coach. You guys might call him Mr. Perez or Rick Perez, whatever it may be. Coach B forever for me. Um, but this is someone that I, I couldn't picture anyone to, to be where he is, to be able to be involved with the Obvious Boys and Girls Club. There's no better person in the city of Redding to, to watch over these kids, to protect these kids, to influence and motivate these kids to get to that next level. And it doesn't have to do nothing with sports. It has to do everything with making these kids be the best person that they can possibly be and accomplish and achieve that. And the only reason I say this is because Coach P was the one person since I could possibly have met him from start to finish that always pushed me and nudged me and made sure I was going to the right direction. Not because he's seen the potential, but because I'm a human, I'm a kid, and he wanted to inspire, influence, and make me the best person that I can be. And, and he knows how to get to there. So a lot of these kids... A lot of these kids are in the right direction. They're going, they're going to be treated the right way, the correct way, and there's no better person than having someone from the city of Redding protecting the kids within the city of Redding. So thank you. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, as, as I wrap up here, you know, and, and I think Bonnie and Christian were able to put everything into a nutshell. We, we have some needs and, and we know that we need all of your support here, you know. We, we need your support. We've got infrastructure that we need support with. You know, we need programming that we have to support. You know, there's so many different things that the club need. We got staffing needs, you know, and I think somebody had mentioned the pay of our directors. You know, we, we have to take this club to the next level, okay? And it's there because let me tell you something, the kids are putting the love, the joy, they're putting everything else out there. All right, we gotta meet them on the other end here. So let's start here today. This is going to be a movement. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody who put this thing together. The energy is real and the night is coming.